This is Christopher McNabb, who is facing charges for the murder of his two-week-old child in Covington, Georgia. After the child's mother reported the baby missing to police, local law enforcement immediately launched a search. Later that night, McNabb is seen in front of TV cameras begging for his child back. I want my kid back, man. That's my child, man. I want my kid, man. The next day, the child's body was found in a nearby wooded area. The cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head, which was later ruled a homicide. McNabb was arrested and charged with the murder of his own two-week-old baby. After he was found guilty, we now move on to the sentencing. McNabb can then be heard claiming his innocence. I'm innocent. I didn't do it. I've maintained that the whole time. I would never do this. That's all I gotta say. I would never do it. I'm innocent. And now the judge lets McNabb unknowingly choose his own sentence. You claim you're innocent, so you tell me what sentence the man or woman that you claim did this should receive. If you ever find out who did them, they deserve to be under the jail. Okay. So they ought to get the maximum sentence. Most definitely. Okay. On the crime of malice murder, I sent you to life in confinement without parole. On considering the death of another, I sent you to After McNabb was handed down the max sentence, he was moved to Hayes State Prison in Tryon, Georgia, where he is serving his life sentence. This is Franklin Williams, who is convicted of multiple felonies, including armed robberies and fleeing police in Cleveland, Ohio. And only Dr. Again, I'm going to interrupt President Mr. Williams. President. Listen to me. I'm going to gag you in one second. Williams conducted three armed robberies before leading police on a high-speed chase. He was later arrested and convicted. Now at his sentencing, Williams would not stop talking, despite more than a dozen warnings from the judge. Do you not let me that means zip it right now. You're trying to... Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. That's so, a violation of the hip law, Judge. Here we go. This resulted in the judge ordering Williams' mouth to be taped shut. If you spit on, attempt to bite, or injure any of my deputies, you're going to have a bad day. At a following court appearance, Williams has something to share with the judge and cameras. Freedom of speech, no duct tape. With the hashtags. Aside from all the interruptions, the judge can hand down William's sentence. You face the potential maximum consecutive sentence of 134 years. I ordered a 24 year sentence. After Williams received a 24 year prison sentence, the judge later apologized for the duct tape and threw out that sentence. He then appointed a new judge, where she sentenced him to 33 years behind bars. This is Kamia Gamet, who is charged with the murder of her boyfriend in Jackson, Mississippi. Reportedly, the attack happened during an argument between the two individuals, and ended with the boyfriend being violently stabbed to death. Gamet was arrested on first-degree murder charges. In court, Gamet would claim her murder was in self-defense and her boyfriend was attacking her. But in the end, she was found guilty of murder. The way I was portrayed, everything, mostly everything was lies. There was a little bit of truth, but mostly I was convicted of Lies. We now move into the sentencing, where Gamet reportedly kept interrupting the judge. You're gonna uh, shut your mouth, or I'm gonna have some duct tape put on it. With Gamet showing no remorse, the judge has some final words. You stab, you stab, you stab, you stab until he was dead. I agree with the family. I hope you die in prison as well. You know, if this was a death penalty state, you'd be getting the chair. In the end, Gamet was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. This is Kimberly Kessar, who was charged with the murder of her co-worker in Nassau County, Florida. Jordan Beard is Jolene Cummings' cousin. Kessar was working at a Tangles hair salon under a fake name. She reportedly was on the run for 25 years and wanted in several states. She wouldn't be found until she brutally murdered her co-worker with scissors and allegedly disposed of her body. This is Kessar after she was arrested and awaiting trial. Are we on mute anyway so I can say whatever the f I want? We're not on mute. Oh, uh, okay. And this is what it was like to supervise her in jail. She began to remove feces from styrofoam trays in the back of her cell and smear it on herself in the walls. She began to throw feces at Smith and then we're not. Now in the trial, she had to go to a separate room due to her outbursts. I refuse them. I have refused them. I refuse the I public defender's office. They appointed Jolie Cummings' cousin as my public defender. What? You don't want the public to know that? And she continuously made false claims about her former public defender. Jordan!
She was later found guilty of first degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison without parole. This is Kyandria Cook, who was found guilty of carjacking charges in Volusia County, Florida. 18-year-old Cook and her then 17-year-old boyfriend had used a dating app to set up a carjacking, where the boyfriend reportedly shot the victim, leaving him seriously injured. After fleeing the scene and being on the run, the pair attempted another carjacking just two days later, but they were arrested. Now in court, Cook stands in front of the judge for her involvement in the theft and shooting. Is she guilty of all three charges? Sentence you to 20 years in state prison. <laughs> that is Cook's mother that can be heard crying. Reportedly, the reason for this very emotional outburst is there was a miscommunication with the assistant public defender, where Cook and her mother thought she wouldn't face any prison time. <laughs> Cook's sentence was later reduced to 11 years in prison. This is Jacob Morgan, who at 17 years old was found guilty of setting a house fire that killed a family member in Rock Hills, South Carolina. Morgan was left alone to look after his 14-month-old stepbrother, and reportedly, prosecutors said Morgan intentionally set the fire that killed his family member. In court, Morgan is at a probable cause hearing. Listen as the judge speaks. So therefore, I am going to find that there is probable cause to charge the individual <laughs> Morgan settled for a plea deal, where he pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter and unlawful neglect of a child. However, he stated he loved his brother and he always maintained his innocence. I love my brother. I still do to this very day. He's my best friend. To kill him would be killing a piece of myself. And I just wish I could have gotten to him in time. Morgan was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but after serving only seven years, he reportedly was released. This is Ignacio Rodriguez, who is the suspect in the death of his four-month-old son in San Antonio, Texas. Reportedly, the child suffered a fractured skull and severe bleeding to the brain. Rodriguez was the lead suspect and was taken into custody. Now in court, Rodriguez stands in front of the judge where he is now facing a capital murder charge, but reportedly, he instead pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of intentional or knowing injury to a child causing serious bodily injury. Mr. Rodriguez, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty. The judge now hands down his sentence. It is the order of the court that you be sentenced to 50 years confinement. But this is the moment that the baby's mother confronts Rodriguez. I didn't run anything of what you did to her son. And for that, I can't ever see myself forgiving you. You were supposed to be our protector, not the one to break our hearts. When the mother starts talking about her other child, Rodriguez insists that she tells the truth. As she gets older, she will start asking questions. Then tell her the truth. Like, tell her the truth. Tell her the truth. Tell her how everything was supposed to be. Tell her the whole truth. Don't don't lie to her. Tell her the whole truth. 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 The whole truth. Court officials quickly remove Rodriguez out of the courtroom. Tell her the whole truth. Tell her the whole truth. He is currently serving his 50-year prison sentence. This is Damon Kemp. He is charged with the double murder of his roommates in Daytona Beach, Florida. Police were called to investigate a burglary at an apartment complex, and it was here Kemp allegedly confessed to the murders. He was originally staying with his two roommates when both individuals were shot several times in the apartment. During Kemp's bond hearing, he's now escorted into court in a wheelchair. The judge tries to get Kemp's attention, but he's completely ignored. Mr. Kemp? God! Damon Kemp, I'm gonna conduct your first appearance. God! For the victim's family, it got so tough, they had to walk out. Kemp is currently in the Volusia County Jail, awaiting his trial. 
This is Erica Butts and Shanita Cunningham. They were both charged with homicide by child abuse in Somerville, South Carolina. Butts, who was best friends with the child's mother, was supposed to be caring for the toddler for two weeks. The child was only three years old. She died from her injuries, reflecting weeks of torture. A time frame that matched the time she had spent with Butts and her lover at the time, Cunningham. What must have been the excruciating sounds that came from that child is more than disconcerting. To this After both women were found guilty, the judge now hands down their sentence. The court finds it appropriate that each be sentenced to the State Department of Corrections for a period of life. They were just sentenced to life in prison. <laughs> Butts and Cunningham are reportedly at separate prisons serving their life sentences. This is Anthony Kirkland, who is a convicted serial killer in Cincinnati, Ohio. They say I am evil and a monster. They're right. Even my mom hated me, but I don't blame her. Kirkland had previously served a 16-year prison sentence for the killing of his ex-girlfriend. A few years after his release, Kirkland begun his killing spree. Over a three-year period, he killed four women, two of them being teenagers. Kirkland was arrested after his fourth murder, as he was caught with one of the victim's watch and iPod, which made him a lead suspect. Eventually, police were able to pin all the murders to Kirkland. Now in court, as the charges are being read out, Kirkland is facing the death penalty, and next, he appears to faint. Count four, aggravated murder. Kirkland was later found guilty on all charges and sentenced to death. He is currently on death row awaiting his execution at the Chillicothe Correctional Facility. 